Is it going to start up again? Hmm. Okay, it seems to have settled down. There's like someone cutting the grass outside super loud. I was making a video and it's like, had to stop. Anyways, quick video, you know the rules. So, um, all right, where to begin? Best thing about competition? No, I don't wanna start it that way. I don't wanna start it that way. Let's just go off the top of my head. All right, so champion challenge. So <clears throat> champion challenge is a very aggressive way of determining the purest source of competitive energy. A lot of people in the world of tricking um, might find that people who are competitive are like too aggressive, bullying, assholes, you know, excuse my language, but you know, the the world of tricking has very hyper competitive athletes that want to be on top and always be on top okay and this is a psychological uh, aspect of the sport that i think people need to be aware of that if people are very aggressive and and are asserting themselves and want to dominate that this is just a natural you know mo uh, uh, an inner drive that a lot of competitors have but it is a quality that people might not like so you might not like people who constantly want to be above you. You might say that they're arrogant or elitist, but there's also a reason why people are the way they are. And um, you don't know what internally motivates and drives people. Everyone has vastly different life experiences and comes from you know, very different cultures, very different backgrounds. So you never know what people are fighting for. And it's not really necessarily your place to judge especially 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 if you are a judge in a tricking competition or an organizer you're not supposed to judge people for things that are not tricking related anyone should be able to come into a competition and everyone should be on board in terms of what are the rules what are the judges looking out for and the competition is supposed to be organized and structured in such a way where it's you know relatively speaking it's set up as equally as possible for everyone um in the past i'm a huge advocate of randomness i know that the modern day you know the industry standard is changing and by the way thank you to um loop kicks mark for giving me uh for helping me to understand better with hooked so yeah previously hooked the rounds were random and i think they gave a, a free pass to shose in 2022 which definitely creates an unfair advantage to him i understand though of course it's like he's the reigning winner why would he have to do the preliminaries but yeah of course if he's if he's get a, a, a free a free pass through the preliminaries that's one more day of rest which means he's going to be not only the reigning winner but also he's going to have a fresher body you know what i mean he's going to be more you know compared to people who just did preliminaries who might be a little bit tired from the day before so not a huge it's not really fair in that regard so i think that they're also going to do away with that uh hooked is doing a great job um mark advised that uh they and i do recall this actually that during the preliminaries that the judges assigned a number and he fleshed that understanding out a lot better in one of the comments so thank you mark i appreciate that uh no hooked is not um fixing their first round they're doing it as uh, legitimately as possible and then of course the way that the the top 16 is structured is for one to be against 16 and you know the the way that kind of puts all the strongest powers on each corner rather than manipulating it directly that way it's based on if you genuinely were assigned that role based on how well you did in the preliminaries so yeah but anyways thanks mark but um yeah, the best thing about competition is that regardless of the factors that lead up to the competition, that the competition is protected and that organizers are protecting it so that whoever should win would win, you know, based on based on performance alone and that people aren't being evaluated for other things. And that one of the main points that I've been bringing up is that people will politically interfere it's not necessarily that competitions are structured 
for someone to for, for there to be like a title match or you know that events play out the way that the organizer wants them to play out which t in my opinion is too much control that's that's manipulation for sure um but uh people will also try and and avoid their competition maybe exclude their competition try to politically you know get this person out of the situation do, do this when that person's injured you know there's people are a little bit craftier and sneakier in the way that they operate in life okay now a competition a competition is about honor which is why when you look at the world of sports karate people you know the competitor will come in they'll walk up to the judges they'll state their name they'll state you know i'm not a sports karate person but from what i've heard they they yell their name <laughs> they don't state it they like yell their name but i think they also yell where they're from and which team they represent and that is stating your intentions directly it's like saying this is who i am this is why i'm here you know that's a very bold direct and some would say confrontational but i would say respectable uh, method of communicating your intentions which is an honorable way of doing things and the reason why i created the champion challenge and by the way it's the regalia of japanese culture the three <laughs> sacred treasures of japan i've got the mirror I've got the sword, and I figured out what my gem was. My gem is this thing right here, the champion challenge. This is the gem of Canada, and this is one of the. This is the only time that this battle format was created, uh, which is produced by a Canadian and used in Canada against other Canadians, but for a purpose. Okay, it serves an actual purpose. It's not just a made-up event. There's an underlying fundamental use case for the champion challenge and that is to determine a true winner why because instead of setting up a show you are arranging directly with a competitor stating the terms of your of your battle initiating a challenge which is honorable and having the opportunity whether judges or judgeless whether it's timed or rounds how many rounds whether it's a big trick or a creative kicks battle, whatever, this champion challenge exists so that one person can challenge another and prove that they are better because that's what a champion would do and they will follow through on that challenge as well. And I, I laid this challenge out back in 2021 and I defeated my opponents, I'm proud to say. And I caught one person cheating in the process who admitted to it, another person who screwed me over who was an organizer here in Toronto. I challenged him because I wanted to kick his ass because he deserved it. Obviously, I didn't fight him fist fight wise, but I challenged him in an appropriate manner, which is to a battle, which is to put my honor as a battler on the line. I showed up. He asked, you know, he wanted less rounds than we initially agreed upon. It went from five down to three and I gave that to him. He wanted a, a longer warm up, so I gave that to him. And I still beat him. He ended up face down on the ground uh, at the very end of the battle, so. And if you don't believe me, you can just go to the playlist and check it out. This is real history that I'm talking about. This is not made up. People say that I have schizophrenia. Guys, I am 100% okay, and I am grounded to reality, okay? This is where I get my glory from, is from reality, not from fiction. Yes, I run anime-inspired dreams, but that's just to sort of relate to my heroes, to say, that I took down Team Rocket, like Champion Red, or, you know, I ended up like Hito Yui from Gundam Wing, one of my favorite, you know, anime protagonists. You know, something like that. That's just the theme of my brand. Every brand is different. Everyone fights for a different cause. But the point is, the point that I'm trying to make is that a competition is supposed to bring you honor and glory and not the other thing. So when we have rankings, a ranking system is supposed to reflect the truth. And the truth is very, very complicated. When events are very transparent about their process, very, very legitimate. When they make a claim and that the components that make up the, that event are historically true, it all fits into the actual history of the sport, which, which if you go to my channel, go to the history section, and you'll see that I'm fleshing out the history, okay? And if someone comes along and says that they make a claim, we can very easily validate or invalidate that claim depending on the components that make up their event and the advertising in which people are trying to present that event. 
which is why one of the best examples, World Federation tricking, is the best example in the world of what the hell are they talking about when they say World Federation anything, and when they host something called the World Tricking Games, and you take one look at it, and it's like, what the heck are they talking about? Because the components that make up that event have absolutely no basis in reality. If they change their their name to tr Iran Tricking Games, I will be happy to put them. I would I would love to put Iran on this side right here. Put World Federation. Well, my, they would have to change their name from World Federation Tricking. There's too many problems with this organization, World Federation Tricking. I don't know what they're smoking, but the point is, if they corrected their behavior and aligned it with reality, I could put them on this side of legitimacy. This is where legitimate competitions go, okay? There's semi-legitimate competitions, and then there's straight up corrupt competitions, okay? There's a sp there is a spectrum. We don't live in a world where everything you do is acceptable. There is some things that are good, and then there are some things that are not good. And my, my channel is to talk about the real, the real deal of what tricking is. It's not, this is not me making stuff up. I do have to invent terminology and stuff, but I'm, I'm trying my best to actually source the truth of the sport, okay? So I've had to reduce, I've had to, you know, put a temporary uh, lock on some people's status uh, because they've been caught interfering with competitions. So mostly stuff that happened here in Canada, and it's the political influence that KTL has here in Canada that has a corrupting effect. We've seen corruption take place Ultimate Tricker is a good example, but the main thing is, uh, you know, I could, I, could, I could list the people out, but at the core of it, what it has to do with is if you are a judge, if you are a community leader, if you are in a position of power and authority and responsibility, uh, your duty is to uphold the truth, which means whether you like the truth or not. It's not about your opinion. The whole point is to be objective. It's not about whether you like a tricker because they eat the same way as you, or they eat a different way than you, then you have to hate them. No, if you're evaluating a tricking battle, you have to award the winner, whoever the, the winner is, out of respect. Because whether your personal feelings should not, you know, your personal feelings should not get in the way of your judgment when we're talking about competition. Outside of competition, if people are doing whatever they want, that's their decisions. But in competition is not when you have the power to uh, to make a personal you know, preference over something that has nothing to do with tricking, okay? If people fight for their own reasons, let's say, a, if a, for example, a plant-based athlete, and let's say you, you just don't like vegans, okay? If they show up and if they perform well, whether you like it or not, they might be fighting because plant, being plant-based motivates them. And you might be aware of that as a judge, but that's not what you're evaluating them on. You're evaluating on their ability to perform. And if they perform better than the other guy, you have to elevate them. And if you make an event that says, no vegans allowed because we don't like vegans, well, that's, that's messed up. And that's the type of stuff that I have to fight against, okay? Because there are groups, whether it's religious or racial or whatever philosophical group, whatever topic that you can think of, people are going to face discrimination and people are going to become minorities because that's just the human experience. People have different beliefs and different understandings. And in the world of tricking, it's not about trying to discriminate. And certainly it's not about trying to set your own people up to succeed and to outcast the people who pose a threat because here in Canada, we had something called the Battle of Canada. Not we. I had nothing to do with it. Not even, like, nothing to do with it. And, um, well, what, what there was was basically the Kerbit Collective came along and they were like, well, how can we gain more notoriety and power and influence in Canada? And they basically just elected themselves. It had nothing to do with the entirety of Canada. And it had everything to do with their own you know, their own ends, their own goals. They structured the event in such a way where you can tell that everyone was on board with that. The judges were all on the same team. And Ethan, you know, Ethan Turner has been, his status has been put on, on uh, lock for now. 
let's see if he changes his behavior because he he was sent in to legitimize what basically was an illegitimate event and we know that you know certain teams have a, a track record of having a a negative influence on competition you know i don't want to i don't want to re-victimize the past you know there's there's people that have been victimized in the past i'm not here to re you know bring up that kind of stuff because who knows how those people feel but we know that some teams have a, a, a bad reputation for things that they've done in the past and we want to see that people have changed their ways you know everyone deserves a chance to improve but if they're just if people are going to fall back into bad habits then that has to be discouraged so i can't you know battle of canada is a really good example of, of one event that just does not fit into the history Yes, if you're ignorant and if you don't know anything about the sport and if you only want to isolate parts of the event that you could use that there is value there, sure. But the whole event as a whole is, of course, it goes into the scam category because it was. The intentions behind it, the way it was organized, it all took advantage of people who don't know any better. So people who don't know any better will take a look at that event and they'll believe in it. An expert like me the champion of Canada takes one look and I can say very quickly that that's, obvi that's obviously, it doesn't fit, it doesn't work, it doesn't make any sense. What are you guys doing? Come on, you know better. Why did you try to hide that too? You know, not even posting up the competition? Come on. There's too many things about that. But the point is, is that if people have the intention to corrupt competition, why should they be on the rankings? And if, if, you, if you've dedicated so much of your life and loving the sport of tricking, why would you put yourself in a position of power only to abuse it and then end up hurting your status, end up hurting your reputation? The higher you climb, the more perf kind of perfect you have to be. You have to make more responsible and better choices, you know? So there's no single perfect human. There's no perfect tricker, but... I would, I would recommend people, you know, clean up their acts to the best of their ability. Be a, be a good role model. Be someone that people can believe in and that they know that you're there to do a really good job. And um, I think it's pretty obvious. It's pretty, you know, it goes without saying. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to use your power to, to abuse it and exploit. And uh, the stuff that the Kerbit Collective has been doing here in Canada is like in a very bad territory. And I've been... Um, bringing up these issues because they do affect community and they do affect competition and of course you know there has been changes made and so i could probably start to alter the image of kerbit collective because it looks like even the organizer or the the artist himself has even is moving away from that but who knows sometimes when you dissolve team rocket they just come back the next game <laughs> you know they come back for the next version of the game and then you got to stop them again but this time it's a different player, you know, instead of champion red, it's champion gold. But uh, yeah, anyway, so it's, I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm trying to be responsible. And uh, hopefully people will understand that if I make any adjustments to the rankings, if it's about assigning people who, who are doing a very good job, who deserve the top spot, number one, number two, or whatever, I want that to be as true as possible. If someone isn't on the rankings, if they've been marked with the frog emoji, maybe I should use the snake emoji, but you know, then that's an indication that people are maybe not the, in terms of how they get ahead, their ethics, their morals, that they're doing, you know, there's legit and then there's illegit. So let's, I would encourage people to be as legit as possible. Take a victory as legitimately as possible. Anyways, I'm out.